Go loud. Welcome back to the Weekly Roast. How's it going, guys? Hello, how are you? How are your hearts? And of course, take a second today at some point now, or a little bit later on, to ask yourself, how's your head? What's going on, guys? How are you doing? It's great to be back. Myself and my lovely... <laughs> my lovely friend, Kieran here, are delighted to be sitting in this chair. Welcome back to the Weekly Roast. Uh, we are developing quite a community of weirdos and fans of the unconventional and cynical, cynical bastards. So uh, thank you for joining us, guys. Every Wednesday, the Weekly Roast, wherever you get your podcasts. If you're new to the show, you are very, very welcome. Now look, guys, lest we drown in an ocean of sanctimony, if I was to do a little preamble about social media, which I'm not going to, by the way, because I don't believe... That there, I, like I spend too much time on social media, of course, but I have to because it's part of my job. I'm not one of those people that thinks social media is a huge problem. I sort of think that we are the problem. Like, give a man a mask and he will tell you how he really feels and social media is just another lovely sort of facade for us to hide our true intentions behind. So look, it's the roast of Instagram captions, Kieran. Kieran, straight off the top of the head, okay? What do you think the worst Instagram caption is? Now, you can't say the one that I did for my engagement. What was that again, actually? You got engaged. Did you go for the yes a thousand times yes? I think I just put an emoji. I must go check. You must go I check. Slate my slate yeah. myself. What did you put up? I think we put up the, uh, we did the collaboration post. Uh, uh, we <laughs> 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 got to get that engagement. Um, we did, what did we fucking do? Just the date, I think. I think just the standard, the date. Oh, basic. Yeah, well, I am, as I'm, as I'm learning, by the way, as I'm learning as I get older, actually, here we are, maybe there is a sanctimonious point at the top of the podcast, maybe there is a rant, Kieran. do you know what I hate? Do you know what I'm getting sick of, okay? And this is the real epidemic. Middle class lads, okay, who are un- unbelievably basic, but they realise in their late 20s that it's actually not cool to be posh and to work in tech, okay? So they watch a Roddy Doyle DVD over the weekend. They change their accents so that it sounds a little bit more inner city Dublin. They purchase themselves a Pelador jumper. They give themselves a bad mullet. They buy some questionable jewellery. They have some cans by the canal and they spend around four years adopting this sort of chip butty down the local calf, arm out the high ace van, pint of milk, page three, bullshit, 90s football, vintage soccer jersey wearing, pseudo hooliganism, nonsense. You're from Ranla. Your dad's a fucking GP. You're a spoofer. Drop the accent. These guys, you know the types. Oh man. You know the people I'm talking about. They all support bows. They all support bows all of a sudden. Up bows. No, but you know what I mean? These guys, you live in Fox Rock. You're an absolute spoofer of the highest order, referring to every man, woman, and child that you see as bro. This is the real epidemic, okay? People give grief to primary school teachers for changing their names to Irish on Facebook, okay? The real problem are these guys, and it, and it's something that we doesn't get talked about enough, it's private school tech bros uh, who want, who, they regret the fact that they never went to Berlin, you know? Uh, but, but they visited a friend of theirs who worked in LinkedIn in Amsterdam for the weekend, and they come back and they're like, fuck this. I can't wear a Massimo Duty quarter zip anymore and a pair of cost trousers. I need to be cool. I need to listen to tech. Techno. I need to hang around Grogan's with 16 rings on my fingers and talking about, yeah, and wearing like an obscure Italian football team, a scarf, a, the scarf of the Napoli under 12s. Do you know what I mean? And uh, of course, the Adi- Adidas Sambas, the anti establishment tech. Oh, it's the roast of Instagram statuses. Let's go, Kieran. When people post, it's giving. Like the most recent one I saw was someone posting, it's giving Michelin star. It's not Michelin star. It's just your own version of a carbonara. You'd make it every Thursday. Yeah, it's giving. You're giving me a headache. It's like there. And also the whole, if you, it's, it's up there with the, if you know, you know, do you know that one? Do you, if you know, you know, what do you mean? If you, if, if I know, I know it's Spanish crisps. 
You've just posted a picture of Spanish crisps, Sinead. Most of us who have been in, you know, walking distance of a Spanish supermarket have come across Lay's. It's not exactly a carton of Fabergé eggs or a punnet of saffron. It's not about anything rare. If you know, you know. Just the picture of the glass, of the Aperol glistening in the sun. You're drinking a homemade Aperol spritz in your back garden. But you didn't have any Aperol, so you just used TK Red Lemonade and vodka. Do you know what I mean? And you didn't have a glass, so you just used an empty plastic bottle. And you didn't have a straw, so you just used a clonic guilty sausage. What? Is everything all right at home, Aoife? Do you need to? Has Derek left? Um, anyway, if you know, you know. It's up. Another one that really annoys me is the era. Oh, I'm in my housewife era. You're 26 and you live at home. You bought one Christmas decoration. Do you know what I mean? I don't think Martha Stewart is going to be looking over her shoulder suspiciously because Simon from Klonski has been to Sostrin and Green and bought one wooden spice rack. If anything, she'll be looking over her shoulder because she's about to sell her shares in Adidas. That's a sort of... Though, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Let's go. It's not even an Instagram caption, but the thing on Instagram or the trend on Instagram that gets me riled up the most is the thousands of people posting reels on the 31st of December uh, with the, and with that, the 2023 season comes to an end over, like it's the 31st of December, of course the year has come to a fucking end. And with that, the worst is whenever it's like the class of 2023, referring to human beings as the class of, as if we're somehow collectively having a shared experience on Earth. We're not. We don't. We won't. We don't like each other. Isn't that the issue? Now, I did post a reel uh, at the end of 2023, so I'm going to try and backpedal on this point wherein I'm insulting others, but I'm somehow absolving myself from committing same said crime. That Coldplay song, it's the... What's it again? Sky Full of Stars? Yeah, Sky Full of Stars. Oh, actually, sorry. Speaking of songs, uh, worst Instagram song that is driving me up the wall. Give me my sunshine. Oh, the clouds parted for like slightly longer than 90 seconds and all of a sudden it's cover me with sunshine when you're out for a walk with the stroller. I'm a bit of a Bill Withers lovely day. Bill Thank Withers lovely bitch. day, is it? Yeah, I'm that's proud. Kanye Good Morning is no longer acceptable. So there's a sea of influencers now just very confused as to what to post because this is the brain of an influencer. It's the morning and they want to do a video to say that they're enjoying the morning. So what do they do? Kanye West, good morning. And then ever since then, they just, yeah, it's lovely. Bill Withers. Bill Withers gets the shout. Hey, Mark, a massive fan of the podcast. And Thank you very much. Huge congratulations for the release of your book and Thank all you. the success that's come with that. And nice. for me, it's whenever I see the caption, hostess with the mostest, like... The most what? Hostess with the mostest, I think, is my favorite, uh, my favorite social media caption of all time. Hostess with the mostest. You've bought one packet of salami and assorted Italian meats. We all know the packet, by the way. We've all been there. Fuck, I'm having people over. I better get some assorted Italian meat, which 73% of that pack will be ignored. Because there's the shriveled up one that, brilliant, but there's the shriveled up one that you don't know if it's supposed to be that dried out. No, nothing should be that cured, Parmese people, okay? And people are calling for Nicola to be awarded with a fucking Michelin star. Do you know what I mean? She's chopped up a bit of fruit and put it into some Prosecco. And people are acting like they're in that The Blind Rabbit in New York or The Dead Rabbit. Or whatever that uh, cocktail... Cocktails in general, actually, we're going to have to do a full roast on. They drive me up the wall. And not just because I'm (laughs) recovering alcoholic. They drove you around the bend, mate. They brought you to your knees, spiritually, emotionally. So, who's laughing now, cocktails versus Mark? Anyway, uh, the hostess with the most is slop. It drives me up the wall. Just because she's provided a lukewarm 1.5 litre bottle of tonic as mixer, okay? She's not exactly the great Gatsby. Hostess with the mostest. We are so easily impressed in this country. If people go to a friend's house, this is genuinely true. If people go to a friend's house and they get one of those round G&T glasses, they start giggling maniacally, like they've been asked to hold a ball, a ball of fire or tame a wild snake. Do you remember actually that when you were a kid on holidays in Lanzarote? Me, age 12. 
<laughs> holding a fucking snake. Because some guy, by the way, this is, don't take sweets from strangers, but by all means, go on holidays to Tenerife when you're nine and get get a picture with an uh, erotic, no, an exotic, <laughs> an exotic snake or a neurotic ape. Do you know what I mean? Just because some lad has come around with a van of wild animals. Do you remember that? You've got like the braids, which are, let's be honest, quest problematic. I don't think that many Irish people are getting those braids these days when they go on holidays. But you're there holding the snake. Brilliant. <clears throat> don't. Uh, yeah. Host, hostess with the mostess. Thank you for a couple of bowls of crisps. One, one bowl of multicoloured hummus. And people think that this should be in the Michelin Guide. Let's go. Hey, Mark. Um, one of the Instagram captions that, like, just drives me mental is when someone puts up a picture of an achievement. Um... And then underneath it, they were completed it, mate, with the green tick. Like, ugh. Just no. <laughs> Just no. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. It's, it's, I feel like lads do it whenever they want to post about graduating from college. I never went to college, as is evident from the litany of pseudo-intellectual observations that I continue to make on this podcast. I think guys do it whenever... You know, they don't, you want to say something nice about yourself, but you don't do it. So you have to, uh, you know, release a book that's riddled with self dep Kieran's <laughs> eyes rolled so far back in his head there. I thought he was achieving orgasm. I thought he was achieving some sort of intimate nirvana with himself. It's the type of thing that a guy does when he gets his degree or he gets engaged. Oh, engagement completed it, mate. Brilliant. Sarah finally fucking gave in after nine years of seeing you. This voice note completed it, mate. The most annoying Instagram caption for me is the one that women seem to use for the mate's wedding photos. It's usually something along the lines of the most beautiful bride that we've ever seen. And then they add in the little eyes welling up emoji. You said this about the last bride and the one before that. And you'll probably say it again after the next wedding you go to. Yeah, there has to be a real th wedding fatigue. Um, we, geez, we need to do a roast on weddings. But wedding fatigue is real. And I think even from a consumption standpoint, like in, in terms of watching other people's wedding stories, they begin to lose all meaning. Like that thing with the napkins, the walking out, the hand holding, the picture of the nana, you know, dressed like Richard Attenborough in Jurassic Park. Oh, what a gangster. What are you calling her? She's not rock and roll. Ask her how she voted in the last referendum. Let's see who's rock and roll then. Let's see how cute Mwirin is whenever we find out how she voted in 2016, okay? Okay, it's the roast of Instagram captions, guys. I hope you are enjoying these as much as I am. On we go. Let us continue. Let us... Ca uh, uh, do you know what I love the most about this one? I think it's... I can really hear the rage in people's voices when, in their voice notes. Uh, it's nice to not be the only angry one. And that's what I love about this podcast in general. It's... There's nothing like the shared feeling of hating the same thing as somebody else. Do you know what I mean? What really... The glue that holds us all together, myself and yourself, dear listener, is the fact that we have the same cynical outlook when it comes to life and the behaviours of our fellow man and woman and child. Okay, let's go. So, yeah, la last night was a movie. Like, it couldn't have been less a movie. It was you and Eva sitting out drinking Prosecco in a shitty little beer garden somewhere. It's the <laughs> furthest thing from a movie. Just the 20 cigarettes for breakfast? Uh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, last night was a movie. Was it, yeah? Yeah, like you're hardly in discussions with Netflix or Amazon Prime over who's going to acquire the rights to your evening outside local weather spoons, uh, Gronya. Do you know, it's it's really, it's up there with, you know, when people post a picture of themselves and it's, uh, oh, last night was a bit of a blur. And it's a group picture before, oh, this is the last picture we got before all hell broke loose. All hell didn't break loose. To say that there was nothing below board about your evening out upon Les Tiles, like there was nothing remarkable. This is the least remarkable series of events and this blur is just another muddy snapshot of the mediocrity of the whole entire uh, evening. Okay, let's go. Happiest when eating pasta, drinking wine, eating donuts, and it's just like a skinny person abusing their privilege. <laughs> Like, and they're just pretending. <laughs> Happiest when? Oh, F off. <laughs> I completely agree with this. Uh, you know the one that, like, thinking of pizza. 
that's weird. You're in a bikini on a beach looking unbelievably beautiful. Do you know, that's what you've done here is when we're not falling for it, you're trying to get us to think that you're just a run of the mill, soul to the earth. All right, me old mucker, let's have a bit of crack. Let's wolf down some 12 inch pizza. Do you know what I mean? And you're not, we're not falling for this. You're a really extremely good looking person who just wants to put a picture up of them good looking. I actually am thinking of pizza. That's the problem. That literally at the crux, at the epicenter of my fucking woes this year is the fact that I adore pizza too much. Well, pizza, I actually have discussed this recently. I think the two foodstuffs, right, pizza and donuts, there is no level of full that I could be wherein I wouldn't be able to then still eat a few slices. Do you know what I mean? Like donuts, I could just, I could just, eat like a Labrador, I would eat until I'm comatose. I would eat until, like I'd sedate myself with donuts and pizza. And that's the game. If you're listening, hot people, the next time you're on Bora Bora, okay, or Maramore, or the Silver Strand, it doesn't matter, whatever beach you're on, stop saying that you're thinking of pizza because we know that you're not. You're thinking, I wonder will that Leinster rugby player who follows me and has recently been liking my stories reply to this going, where's that beach? So then you can reply to him and then four years later you can get married and all will be well. Let's go. Roaming around with a picture outside the Coliseum. Yeah, okay, this is actually a brilliant one. Sorry, I had to take a glass of water and uh, brace myself. Roaming around with a picture of the Coliseum uh, I, I find this amazing because it's almost certainly and almost always taken, it's almost always posted by somebody who you know for a fact has literally gone to Rome. They've got like a, a list because, oh, Eamon and Claire went to Rome two weeks ago. You have to, they've got a list of places that you have to go. And they've got this little checklist where they go to get the pictures. And that's it. There is no roaming around. Do you know what I mean? You, you've gone to Rome and you found yourself perched upon a rooftop bar. You want one limoncello for the snap. And that's it. Um, rooftop bars, actually, for a second. Rooftop bars are the figurative mecca for basic people in their late 20s and early 30s. What do you think of that? Agreed. A rooftop bar in a foreign city is the El Dorado for imbeciles. It's the holy grail for couples who like to give off a cultural buzz, okay, but aren't willing to put the work in themselves to find a decent restaurant. They 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 go on these, you know, biannual city breaks and it is it is the Everest for every couple to climb because they don't relax until they're on a rooftop bar because, you see, a rooftop bar gives them the sense of superiority and they've arrived. When you're at a rooftop bar, you've made it, you've done something with your life because you can go on a city break but you can also spend money on the city break and it's just, the roof it provides safety from the noise, smell and I suppose humanity that exists down below. It's a sanctuary just out of arm's reach for the rest of society so you can sit there perched beside all the other basic couples and you can have a cocktail and you can take a picture and you can go through the pictures that you've taken that day and decide which ones are going to make the little gallery uh, real on the Instagram at the end of the holiday. Okay the rooftop bar and you can have your cocktail which is three times the price of a normal drink because ev for every this is another observation here you go three floors up for every floor that you go up in life in terms of a building the price of the drink is going to go up that's a fact the, the, the rooftop bar is the emperor's new, new clothes of visiting foreign cities avoid them like the plague particularly if there's a sign outside that says rooftop bar if you ask for somebody for advice, by the way, on, on where to go, oh, we're going to Florence for the weekend. Oh, we're going to Copenhagen. Oh, we're going to do Dubrovnik. We're thinking of doing Prague. Oh, well, I have to recommend this lovely rooftop bar. Leave every single WhatsApp group that you're both members of. Remove them from your life, family or not. On we go. So I just hate when people post um, pictures and the caption on it is, I did a thing. Yeah. Oh, it makes me thicker than a wet hen, I swear to God. Sorry, I just... hold on. It makes me thicker than a wet hen. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Marty Morrissey's Magic Hour. And today we've got things of the obscure from the mouths of people. In the, what the hell? Have you ever heard that before? No, never. Thicker than a wet hen. Continue. Oh, it makes me thicker than a wet hen. I swear to God, I just, I don't, I, not even that I don't think that it's like a good caption. It's just like, oh, I did a thing. It's the fact that it's always underneath the most mediocre picture. I was like, I did a thing and it's a picture of them at one point, like, or something. It just wrecks my, it wrecks my balls completely. It puts my knickers in such a twist. The worst, worst is like, I have all the friends underneath the comment and like, 
oh my god you're so crazy oh my god i can't believe you did that la, 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 la. whatever i don't know if this just thing among like my age group i'm 19 but like jesus christ wrecks my buds that i did a thing oh so we're doing Go on, the 19-year-olds listening. Um, yeah, okay, fair play. I I do completely agree. I, I'm i just still thinking about the wet hen thing, to be brutally honest. But I did a thing is read... It's up there with people who use their Instagram. Uh, and I have to tread carefully for a number of reasons. But people who use their Instagram to... But f- speak from the voice of their pet. And then they refer to their owner as my human. Like, take a fucking look at yourself, would you? Do you know what I mean? Get off the internet and stop. Go outside, throw some fresh air into your face and just think about the things that you're doing. You wet hen. <laughs> the cockadoodle do's and don'ts. Guys, this is bringing up a lot of... Uh, who would have thought there's so much repressed rage when it comes to Instagram captions that you've been subconsciously consuming over the last many years? I'm loving this podcast and I hope you're enjoying it too. I remember this being a big thing a few years ago when girls would put up stories for their friends' birthdays and it'd be about 13 slides long because each picture they'd only put one word. So it'd be clicking long. It'd be happy birthday to the biggest slag I know at. And it's just Michelle. I absolutely love this one. I think this trend originated on Facebook back in the day. Do you remember when it would be somebody's birthday and the shrine would go up, although the birthday person themselves in each picture would resemble some sort of deceased, uh, beached uh, walrus of sorts, whereas the person posting the birthday picture somehow miraculously looks beautiful. It was always the way. Happy birthday to my partner in crime. Do you know what I mean? You're not committing any crimes. The only crime here is the one against friendship because you've posted a picture of her that is so degrading and she looks desperate. You, though, on the other hand, look unbelievable. Swipe for surprise always annoys me as well because it's like, it's just a picture of them. I, these could definitely just be like my age group, I don't know, but like the swipe for surprise is just one picture of them and then you swipe for the surprise. Like, oh, surprise, oh my God. And it's just another picture of them. Or it's a picture of them making a silly face. <laughs> Great crack. Not surprised. Yeah, the surprise thing is interesting because we we knew you were pregnant, uh, Yvonne. You've posted, you've been making subtle gestures and hints on your Instagram for the previous nine months to the extent you've been like, oh, we just, we just went to a wedding there, uh, had a few baby Guinness. Do you know what I mean? Went out for dinner on the weekend, had some baby back ribs. Do you know, it's, there's no surprise here that... <laughs> that you're pregnant it's another another one that really annoys me is the monthly recap I don't care I don't think anybody cares I don't think anybody has ever cared less about anything Le- least of all okay when your monthly recap is just a picture of a fucking coffee cup pointed towards the sky a cooked breakfast which you undoubtedly didn't eat and then your boyfriend Craig eating a cronut do you know what I mean? Craig, who has shown more commitment to his fantasy football league this year than his fiance's hobbies or interests, if she had it. The, the quiet sadness in Craig's eyes. Do you ever see? The, there is no, nothing gives me the greater. I don't know if this makes me a bad person, but the, the, lo, the boyfriend that is subjected to the girlfriend's Instagram is my favorite sort of person. You know, the look of quiet dejection on his face. The sadness is visible in his eyes when he's sitting there waiting to eat his breakfast and he's got the knives and forks in his hand like some sort of... And he's just like... Yeah. Just the dis- just the sadness with the life is emanating from him, you know, just beneath the sort of imitation Jean-Paul Gaultier that he got in the Portuguese market last summer. Poor Craig is just sitting there waiting to eat his fry and he's wondering, the lads told me to get a missus. I thought that this was going to be a good crack. I thought I could just shag something and then still watch football. Do you know what I mean? I didn't think that I'd have to live. I didn't think I'd have to communicate. I didn't think I'd have to conversate. I didn't think that I would have to vacate and go on couples weekends away to Lisbon, spend extortionate amounts of money to get into the nearest rooftop bar, have an espresso martini that gave us both the runs, and then come back to the Airbnb, have boring missionary, and figure out how to leave the key in that stupid box on the door down the 
the bottom of the stairs. I feel bad for Craig in this situation. So he sits there sullen sullenly to be subjected in her Instagram story. Do you know what I mean? He's sitting there like a wounded wildebeest. He's supposed to be in his prime, but instead he's stuffed into a cos quarter zip. Uh, quarter zip seems to be getting a turn, turn today. Like a depressing mug shot. He just wants to have a go at the hash browns. Craig, smile. I don't want. Just smile. Hold your juice up. I don't want to. The glass is tiny. I've already refilled it three times. Hold your juice up, Craig. Go on, Craig. Please, Sandra. The eggs are going rubbery. Hold your fucking juice up, you c**t. When they have the caption, cure me, and the picture of Luke's 8 original and a chicken filler roll from Spar. Yeah, we get it. You're on the beer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and this is where Craig wanted to be, by the way. This is, Craig wants to have a chicken fillet roll and a baguette. And he wants to, you know, go into the WhatsApp group and see what videos of, you know, deep fake celebrities having intercourse have been doing the rounds of lately. Or oh, cure me. It's up there with the Stevens' day, dusting off the cobwebs, <laughs> blowing off the cobwebs with the fa- out for the family walk. You know, uh, with people in these garish Christmas hats and gloves and scarves Blowing off the festive turkey, blowing off the wine, dusting off. It's the H. Whenever people add the H in, you know, Jafantia Spud, excuse me? West is best. West is best is another one. Then the, then you've got the smug version where people post a yoga class and they'll have the timestamp on the video. So it says 6 a.m. and it's about to sweaten out last night's wine. You had one glass of Valpolicello, okay? I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm definitely not the person to be criticising anybody on what they drink or don't drink. Let's move on before I drown in self-serving, uh, whatever. One of the things that really pisses me off is when frail influencers describe an ice latte as having them in a chokehold. I mean, if you're being asphyxiated by semi-skim milk, you might want to have an intolerance test on Shiva. Zing, I love this one. Really enjoy this one. It's the subtlety of it. Because it's the subtle behaviours on Instagram that are oftentimes the most infuriating. Another one that I've noticed recently um, is the the picture of the person going to an art gallery. But they get their mate to take a picture from them, of them from behind. As if they're sort of staring at the at the painting in a deep and contemplative manner. You know what I mean? As if they're not thinking about anything other than should I put this as my hinge profile today or will I wait to see if we get another picture in Amsterdam later on? Do you know what I mean? The art gallery, similar to the rooftop bar, uh, on the pilgrimage of culture signaling that is your latter, the latter half of your 20s, going to an art gallery is up there. It's the one that we all do. You felt like you have to do it because it makes it look like that you care about more in life than intercourse and money. And that's just, you know, it's not, it. what do you think, Carol? You're hitting your 30s when you're going to an art gallery. You're hitting your 30s and we have the audacity to say, oh, is there an, what exhibition is on? As if you go, as if you go to more than one exhibition every fucking 18 months. And by the way, deep down, you're always hoping they're going to say Tutankhamun. That's the, (laughs) in the same way that furniture shops are never not having a sale on. When are they not just doing an Egyptian? Oh, the bog bodies. If I see one more bog body, by the way. Every buggy wants to rule the world. What a ridiculous segue out of a joke. You don't know how to finish. Hey, Mark. Just a quick one. Um, annoying Instagram captions. Can't quite explain it, but really hate when people, their Nazis, uncles, or whatever, post pictures of kids and caption it, start them young. And they will invariably be doing some sort of inane adult task like be behind the wheel of a car or be sweeping the floor playing with the hoover or whatever but more often than not they're at the pub and they're holding a pint <laughs> they're in the beer garden it's pint baby we all love pint baby but the stardom young caption has been grossly overused and it's very irritating and i can't explain why but i hate it yeah i'm a huge fan of this one it's the one where you get three guys uh, the three guys who are friends and their babies and they've all had babies at the same time and they take a picture of them down the pub and they all give the babies a pint to hold and they say oh you know they were their father's uh, sons anyway really yeah do they also split the G and put on accents that are slightly more inner city than is natural to them if that's the case your babies are gobshites <laughs> 
I, a lot of anger for the tech bros today. But you know that, like, uh, you know they're your father's sons. Oh, because they're having a Guinness. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Oh, Guinness as a personality trait. Again, I'm not one to criticise, and this is me walking my way into, uh, walking my way to the treacle of hypocrisy and sanctimony. But, like, I do just think the idea of making Guinness your personality is just, like, we get it. We get it. Guilty. Guilty. Kieran's a big Guinness guy. Kieran, if Kieran's not face fucking a pint of Guinness by Friday night, he's not a happy man. In a roo- in a rooftop bar just after the art gallery. It's different, baby. And we're nearly at the end of the show, guys, but there are still some more ones. Let's just go. Let's just fly through these really quickly. It's the final round. The most infuriating Instagram captions known to man. Let's go. So on Insta captions, I absolutely hate when somebody has a life changing event, like their wedding, like or their child, and they're like, oh, so I did a thing. I'm like, okay, like you legally changed your name and now you have shared taxes, but you did a thing. It's like, what the fuck? Like, so fucking unoriginal as well. It's so annoying. And what's the other one? Oh, when they're talking about their partners and they're like, oh, the boy did good. And he like, had, like they got engaged or something it should be a ring and it's like oh the boy did good I'm like yeah you fucking probably picked it yourself you dope <laughs> oh anyway love the pod absolutely love the, the crack and um, keep it up and I love the book everything is great everything is great thank you very much all it takes see Kieran. all it takes is for me to get a little compliment and I go weak at the knees I can feel it in my ovaries I coo like a little spring lamb I don't know about the ovaries thing. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, the boy did good. The boy does a lot of bad. The boy cheated on you recently in Prague. The boy does a lot of bad. The boy did good is one that drives people up the wall. I'm just amazed how it still happens. It's up there with matching pyjamas at Christmas or Irish comedians thinking it's funny to make jokes about the weather in Ireland. Oh, only in Ireland could it be a precipitation one moment and sunshine the next. It is just exhausting to it's exhausting it's people people adding the h into that on instagram is so fucking cringe two things as irish comedians that just drives me up the wall the weather and then the accents they oh they speak like this over here but they speak like that over there brilliant that's the observation that's the joke isn't it mad the way only in our only in Ireland, only in Ireland does anything ever happen? Jeez, you wouldn't see that anywhere. No, you would. You would actually. And it's a video of somebody reversing into a Garda car. Oh, you wouldn't see that anywhere. No, you would. Let's look at, I think police brutality uh, is a bit of an issue in other countries the last time I checked. Only in Ireland would you see what? Somebody shoving two hot dogs in his jacket going into the cinema and then send it into joe.ie. No, you'd see that sort of stunningly banal behaviour everywhere in the, in the universe, in the globe. There's nothing uniquely Irish about this. Even if somebody's wearing, I don't know what, a gay burn jumper and they're unzipping and they're throttling themselves into 16 pounds pints of Guinness like it's a glory hole, okay? There's still nothing uniquely Irish about having intercourse with a pint of stout. Everybody wants to... Hey Mark, um, love the pod, fair play to you. Um, my annoying Instagram caption is when couples who constantly have war uh, and break up once every few weeks for several weeks and then get back together put up 12 months with my whole world Love emoji, world emoji, when they've probably been together for about six weeks cumulatively. Yeah, you can't be... The the accumulative stuff, it's like whenever you see the engagement. Sweethearts, when we were 14. What happened when you were 19 and he went off to Brisbane and slept with more people in one year than Steve Irwin shagged jellyfish? You can't... You cannot have a go with Steve Irwin, Kieran. Don't be feeding me those jokes. That is absolutely outrageous. No, 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 no. But, uh, yeah, let's talk about the year he went on his J1 to Huntington Beach, got third degree burns in Bush Gardens, fell in love with the nurse that treated him on site, and they had sex behind the corndog stand. Do you know what I mean? You weren't, you haven't been together since, you can't just put that, that's like me saying I've been on a, I've been on a diet since I was 15. But yes, I completely agree with you. Do you know another one actually that's on, on my mind recently? Have you seen these get ready with me videos? Oh. Man, People are very fast and loose with the GRWM sort of caption on Instagram these days. 
So today we decided to keep, and I mean, by the way, I don't do not want to thwart or piss upon anyone's parade if someone's out there trying to make something of themselves and do whatever on Instagram. But like, some of the videos doing the rounds are just... So today, uh, we decided to keep it really classy and go for something timeless with a solid undertone of sophistication. And then it's a fucking Zara hoodie. <laughs> are you joking me? So uh, it's the last night of the holiday here, so I really wanted to go for something with a bit of zest that also didn't overcomplicate things, that keeps me grounded, and then also shows I'm ready for action. Brilliant. And it's a H&M tank top. Are you actually taking the piass out of me here? Because it's fucking... Get ready with me. Oh, you look like you got dressed in the dark. And those Nike dunks, you're not... And then they, the way that they refer to, like, cologne and stuff is like... For my older today, I'll be used... For your what? <laughs> Smugness. Arrogance. Confidence. Overconfidence. Delusions of grandeur. Speaking of which, welcome back to the Winkly Roast. With me, your host, Mark Megan. On we go, my boy. When lads are posting their engagement pic and the caption is pressure's off now, it's like, relax, Dan. You've been clinging to her since in transition year. You know, it's been your whole personality for the last 12 years. This isn't a surprise. Yeah, this is the sort of, uh, it's that sort of, uh, me misses banter. You know, it's the sort of, oh, I suppose it was time to do the honourable thing, really. <laughs> You're the worst person in the world, Rupert. You are the worst person in the world. Uh, yeah, you know yourself, skin. Yeah, we're done. The knees are getting weak there. <laughs> the worst banter. Fucking sh This is a lobotomy. Give me, perform a lobotomy on me in the street whilst you split the G. Use your gilet. Wrap me up in it. Toss me into the canal now. Throw me over the hipsters with their tote bags and their badly chopped hairdos. Bury me with the bog bodies. Put me on in a museum next week. Shove an apple up my bum and sage in my mouth and people can come visit me and you can take a picture of my fucking withered, stuffed, shiny corpse with yourself standing in front of it observing my willy wondering is it cartoonishly small because he's dead or was it always? I don't know what look let's just yeah yeah you know yourself yeah uh, well we've been together now for a couple of years now it was only a matter of time really I know look, I'm happy enough like I know we are ah, you know I'm happy enough looking for to get good luck okay guys before we sign off for the day and I go about the rest of my life I do want to just caveat this this final voice note of the podcast with it is uh, barbaric. It's disgusting. It's something that I have never seen on Instagram or any form of social media. And believe me, I have been to the Mariana Trench of the internet and back, and I've still never seen somebody speak like this. So, you know, for those of you with sensitive souls, ears, hearts, minds, or bodies, please uh, perhaps skip forward now and uh, do not listen. But apparently, this is something that does the rounds. Maybe it's a Gen Z thing. Maybe it's a. Am I Gen Y? No, I'm a. Am I a millennial? I'm millennial, okay. Um, have a listen. So one that is unfortunately burned into my mind, and thank God I've only seen it once, is an Instagram caption of a photo of like a relatively new couple. And the caption was, until the room stinks, wet emoji. So make of that what you will. Well, I mean, the thing to make of it is that you're, I'm assuming they are saying that the scent of their intercourse is going to populate the otherwise dense air in the that is grotesque I don't I do not believe that somebody could actually post that on Instagram but then again every day is a school day and the world will never cease to surprise me good night God bless and good luck Thank you so much for listening to the Weekly Rouse, guys. I think that we're going to need a part two of Instagram captions because we only got through about 6% of the voice notes today. Uh, thank you so much to everybody for tuning in each week, every Wednesday, where you get your podcasts. And thank you all so much who are listening to the show. Send me a DM. Let me know how you're finding it. Let me know what parts of it you enjoy. If you have any suggestions for the show or if you have any creative input, please DM me at Megan Mark on Instagram. And take care of yourselves. Go out. Enjoy your Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Be nice to yourself. And I will see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>